monsters now! We find our vile villains here in the skies above Gorgar, on board the Siren, flagship of the Forgotten Fleet. Marcus, come home. Uh, yeah, I want to come home, but without you. And a goblin war zeppelin charges ahead with Olog leaning off the front. Somebody fucking kill me! Takes one step back, boom, and fall off the side of the ship. <laughs> Clearly not you doing back there. Fine, fine! Swinging from below and rips this tree fully out of the ship. It bursts fully into flame. You see Olog calls out to the goblin. Why the fire! Olog reaches his hand to the prow of the ship. I have been cursed with eternal life! And rips the front of the ship in half. You all begin to plummet out of the sky. Welcome, one and all, back to Escape from the Blood Cave. I'm your Dungeon Master, Brendan Lee Mulligan. Here, as always, are our vile villains. Say hello, vile villains. Hello, hello vile villains. Oh, gosh, guys. Last we left off, our vile villains were <laughs> in the air. Wee. In a rending sky ship that had been torn asunder at the final effort by an insane orc barbarian, mm -hmm. mostly by a massive explosion, an attack of roots, mm -hmm. a mangling goblin zeppelin, mm -hmm. and basically just taking a bunch of damage. Mm -hmm. uh, time slows to a standstill. For all of those below decks, which include Marcus, Leland, Maggie, all of you watch as Floor suddenly stops pushing up on your feet. It's not pushing up anymore to keep you in one place, and instead you're going to be in another place. And very shortly after you're in that new place, you're gonna be in an even newer place. <laughs> and the odds are that's going to keep happening faster and faster for a while. Hmm. Very detailed you description of falling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very Tolkien-esque. Yeah. <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> <saying. laughs> Rockland. Um, it's Rockland. Uh, <laughs> it's Rockland, OK? Um, <laughs> um, uh, for uh, Lilith hanging on the side with Old Pickering, you hear Old Pickering go, Yar! And <laughs> as <gasps> you uh, begin to you are safely holding on to a giant spar of wood, but that wood is no longer attached to anything. Uh, and you begin to fall away as all your little children jump onto your massive body. Efink, you get to watch a ship disintegrate in front of you, holding onto a wheel that uh, remains to be the only solid thing you are still grasping. So you're just holding. You look out at the deck and see Bolric Belbarrel, the uh, dwarven warrior, um, begin to fall, and she hits terminal velocity right away. Oh, <laughs> no! They were just heavy. Yeah, like you re entry. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's got the fucking NASA heat tiles on the bottom of her, <laughs> of her boots. Um, yeah, this dwarf just fucking rockets. And you see that she doesn't even twist in the air, she remains upright, shooting <laughs> down like a fucking bullet. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Uh, and uh, so far, uh, you get to watch. Um, all of this happening is a weird thing of gas that you can feel yourself being like baked by the heat of the volcano. And as you're like floating, you can feel the essence of the crown within you, this kind of like holdover temp crown containing the essence of the Lord of Shadows. And as you're like almost like a focusing on keeping this steam and mist together, you feel a as a membrane of mucus wraps around you. Uh, and you feel so much, <laughs> so, this adventure is all about balloons. Yeah. 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 I just a cloud of gas inside a Jeremy skin. <laughs> I just let a Jeremy yeah. balloon. You're yeah. a fart. You're yeah, a Jeremy fart. fart. Yeah. I'm a living fart. <laughs> you kind of look like a snot green Glinda bubble, it's like from the Wizard of Oz, yeah. scintillating. Yeah. It's like the prisoner, the weird light. Yeah. Yeah. Rover. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, 
I will ask this. Um, uh, I'm going to go around the table, and probably the answer to this question is nothing. So I want you to make it okay for you to say nothing. But is there anything you guys are attempting to do as you begin to fall? Reka. I feel a sharp pain from within my belly. No! <laughs> Wait, what the? And I labor. think I'm going into labor. <laughs> uh, thank God. I think uh, things weren't traumatic enough. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you feel your fire break <laughs> and a blast of fire. Uh, <laughs> and you thought it was okay to do nothing? <laughs> <laughs> okay to do nothing? Uh, and you feel yourself begin to go into labor. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, is, is Leland doing anything as he begins to fall? Leland, uh, having his, his like slow, kind of almost uh, uh, like indie rock soft jazz in his back mind as he takes in the idea that he's going to die, glances over and sees this flame jet burst out of her and goes, are you fucking serious? <laughs> <laughs> and just closes his eyes and accepts his fate. Uh, um, as I am still, I, I feel like not every, it's like it's like an, the, the way an, earth, or an earthquake works, so it hasn't quite necessarily gotten to the helm. And as there is no balloon holding it up, I do assume that magic is holding it up, and I wonder if there's any sort of shard of wood or splinter that still has the magical flying power that might even half hold me up a little bit, where that I could possibly maybe surfboard or something. So you, Titanic this, okay. style, so this is hold going, onto this, a door. So this is going to be a arcana check to identify said piece of wood, okay. then coupled with an athletics check to actually jump and grab it. Perfect. Um, so we're going to call both of those. Well, the arcana check on the fly. This is you doing hard <laughs> arcane thing as the yeah. ship is rending in front of you. <laughs> so we'll call this a DC, uh, I'll call it DC 22 arcana check. Okay, and I have a plus five, so 17 or higher. And that is a nine, so 14. Uh, you look around and you're like, how does this ship work? <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're like, interesting, not what I need. Ooh, that's elvish, that's nice. <laughs> and you're uh, falling through the air yes. um, uh, so far. Um, am, I'm, uh, am I falling or am no, I flying? No, you're flying. You're just, you can just head to the ground. I'm just going to drift, gen I'm going to wander slowly as a cloud. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, just gonna drift gently down to the ground, I guess. Um, Tr uh, try to, try to, uh, like, I, I assume like, I can see where other people are kind of heading, like, with the, trying to get, just get close to wherever people will hopefully land. <laughs> um, I am a general, me fart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome, uh, Lilith. Um, okay, so how can I see, because uh, when I, when everything fell, I was mm. sort of right near everybody. Can I yes. see them? Since I'm attached to the spar, am I falling at a, a quicker rate? Like you are where? No, you're not falling at a quicker rate. You're holding on to Pickering right now. Um, your children have all sort of like jumped on your back. Uh -huh. um, uh, and, and you are starting to fall as well. Um, uh, it all depends sort of what you want to try to do. There's also kind of this explosion. Uh, Olag, you see, also is like falling to, to his doom right now. Um, uh, uh, but you have basically a snap second to try to do something. I will also say this. You guys are not going to fall clean because you're not falling from a thing that was stationary. You're falling from a thing that already had a lot of velocity and movement to it and was like spinning and turning. So you've got like a split second basically to try and do something. Okay. Um, and I don't do, I see everybody. Um, make a, uh, make a perception check. I'll say for every five points above ten, you can see an additional person. Not because it's not bad visibility, but it's because there's so much debris that it's like, uh, that it's obscured with, you know, ship. Um, is this a d disadvantage because yes, of exhaustion? Okay. Um, is it, has my aura dissipated? It has not, so you still have your aura, so you're just okay, going to so be a flat roll. Uh, thirteen. Um, cool. So I said every five points above ten, you can see uh, an additional person. So ten means you can see one. Um, you can choose whether you're. You can choose which of the other PCs you are seeing. Really? Moment. Yes, you can. You can choose one. <gasps> I'm putting that on you. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. 
Okay, so let's see. When we fell, who's closest to the to the I think door? the closest probably would to the door is probably Marcus. Marcus. Yeah. So I, I so I can see Marcus. Mm -hmm. um, and how far away is he? Uh, at the moment of the explosion, probably about like 10, 15 feet away. Okay, here's what I want to do. Um, so instead of uh, so I'm clinging to the spar. I have uh, my aerial shape. As a, as a Drew, my wild shape Ariel is um, instead of becoming a different animal, I uh, lean into the spider thing, and so I have an aerial balloon, the kind that little baby spiders have that mm -hmm. can sort of I can so I can drift with currents. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate that, but attach it to the spar. Mm. Okay. I'm going to say that your the, the mechanically in game the way that's working is your strength allows you to hold onto the spar of okay. wood just fine, and you are and now have a fly speed due to your wild shape. So you're holding onto the spar, you have the balloon, uh, you're holding on to it. Uh, what is your you're going to attempt next? Um, so I'm going to try and fly over and catch everybody, uh, both manually and if we do it in rounds with cool. vine whips. Cool. Um, the only person you can see before you guys are scattered distance-wise beyond range to catch up is Marcus. So you're going to have a chance to catch Marcus. Okay. Um, uh, what is the spell you're using to do that? Um, or, you, or, or if you're not using a spell, you are... Um, do I have the ability to manually to fly to just over? To fly him, after him? Fly after him um, and catch I'm him, a... or should it, or uh, Web Whip has 30 feet. Web Whip has 30 feet. Um, you can get Manny to closer to him with a fly speed. You can either use the spell or you can try to fly, which would be a skill check. I'll be, I will fly. Okay. I'll fly over. Uh, cool. So you fly over to get Marcus. Um, go ahead and all I'm going to ask you to do is make a, uh, a DC 20 acrobatics check. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, and this is at disadvantage. disadvantage. Oh no! <laughs> uh, that that's a nat one. Um, you fl uh, you fly over on the spar. Boom. Your kids are safe. You've got the balloon behind you. You reach out, Marcus. You see this web. Pickering says, "Put out your hand, Captain!" Oh! And this web goes, and Marcus is off in the smoke in the column coming off of the scary volcano, and you lose everybody. They're beyond vision. Uh, and you guys are falling through smoke. Um, uh, not above the caldera, but just the latent smoke in the air this close to it. Um, and we're gonna go... Uh, You're gonna check what I'm gonna do? Oh, yes, Eddie, sorry, yes. Uh, <laughs> so, speaking of debris, Marcus grabs a piece of debris uh, as he flows through the air and readies his fog of war and waits till he gets 30 feet from the ground. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to make you make a check. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be some steel checks involved. This is the most wild shit I've ever heard. Um, um, incredible. Um, we'll start altitude-wise uh, with Soakbar and uh, Lilith. Um, you guys are falling. And Lilith, you're flying, so you're shooting around. You have Pickering. Um, and you see the soak bar bubble, the Jeremy bubble. Um, Ew. <laughs> <laughs> you guys fall through, through uh, you guys fly at a slower rate uh, through the smoke together. Uh, and so the uh, battle didn't go well, I take it. <laughs> <laughs> I was heading up for a while, and then I thought, oh, oh change direction. Could have gone better. Could have gone better, okay. All right. Um, I got the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys look out, and the, there's a moment where a thin sliver clears in the smoke, and you guys are descending slowly enough that you can kind of look through it. Um, uh, as you're looking through the smoke for a second, you guys behold white lights all throughout the lands of Gorgar, of the forces of men, elves, and dwarves that have gathered here. They have closed into a distance of probably about, you know, they're, they're within maybe another 100 miles of the Blood Keep. Um, and, uh, you know, it's in, you're like maybe about 20 miles or 30 miles from the Blood Keep yourself, so you're almost halfway to the Forces of Light. 
You look and see them all, and you see the scary volcano begin to erupt and lava spilling down, <laughs> spilling down from it. Hear more rumbling. You see that one of the outlier towers of the Blood Keep has fully collapsed. Uh, it's still standing, but you can see some cracks in the base. Uh, and you both look out, and um, Sokbar, you behold the Blood Keep and all the forces of light, and you see this tower, and it strikes you for a moment how alike the Blood Keep is to the towers of men and elves beyond it. You look at all of the civilization of these orcs and trolls, and you look out, and they're all wielding the same weapons, and it's just more war, and you look out and see no swamp or tree or anything of that kind, and you smell the bodies of dead and burning wargs and aurochs that have been slain, all in the name of Zalunaj. Uh, and Lilith, uh, you have a moment, you look behind you, you have Pickering under your arm, you see all your kids are covered in ash and soot, and a lot of them are tending to their wounded brothers and sisters, uh, except for the ones that are too wounded, they're being eaten. Um, and you see that uh, uh, Russell looks up and goes, Mom, are we gonna be okay? I, yes, everything's going to be just fine, Russell. You look and see the blood keep standing there, and uh, for a moment can only wonder if all of this would have come to pass if someone else had been sitting on that throne. And maybe not even from a place of power hunger, but from a place of all the foolish decisions that have been made, not telling anyone the nature of the crown, not telling anyone what was going on with the hunt for it. And you think of all your children on your back depending on you and needing you to survive. Um, you both have this shared moment together hanging in the sky as you look at the blood keep. What are we gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you descend uh, even lower in altitude. Um, uh, Effing, you are falling through the sky. I'm technically still on the ship. Like, I'm holding the wheel. You are We're very much not on the ship. There's no <laughs> ship to be on. Um, okay, great. You're in a big cloud of chunks of wood holding a wheel that steers nothing. Thank you. And the metaphor of holding a wheel attached to nothing and how that relates to your oracular properties Ooh. is not lost on me. Uh, <laughs> 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 Spicy, spicy fall. <laughs> uh, as you fall, it also is not lost on you that earlier this day, both your father and your husband fell as well. Um, and you hear voices in your ear. Okay, fuck, fuck right off. <laughs> None of right now. Get out of here. None of you are my favorite. <laughs> Please, Mistress, we know no. it's going to work out. We know it is. Mm -mm. You, if you bring... Mm -mm. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> if you bring the crown to the throne, all will be well. No, that's not going to happen. Stop it. You oh. flatter me. <laughs> <laughs> you will be queen. We know it. <laughs> um, go ahead and make a... Um, uh, uh, give me another... Uh, arcana check and a religion check. Um, m m or, I, I, mm -hmm. what if, there was some, another thing I kind of wanted to do, if I have even a slight chance, is death ward myself, mm -hmm. which if I'm reduced to zero hit points, I'm, I could still be alive with one hit point, cool. even if I'm mangled. Um, That's a good move. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Should I still roll the religion, or is that action kind of taking... Oh, the death word is absolutely what you can do, I but you should roll the religion and, okay. and uh, arcane addition to that. You got, believe me, you guys got time on the way. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plenty of. Okay, okay. Oh, God. It's a nat one. It's a nat one. <laughs> it's a nat one. Okay, give me the religion check as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is it a nat one? It's a Two in a row. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I might cry. I, 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 I this is a bad day. This is a 
bad. This uh, is the bad day. Uh, 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 Epic, you feel at your castigation and at you bidding them leave uh, <laughs> that your spirits well and truly leave. And for uh. the first time, for the first time in perhaps centuries, Uh, um, uh, Marcus, um, <laughs> you, <laughs> oh no, oh no, things truly couldn't get much worse than that. <laughs> Why um, aren't there napkins? Oh, oh no! <laughs> That's um, so mean. In terms of act structure, at the break from two to three, there's what we call a dark night of the soul. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, Marcus, um, uh, you are plummeting through the wreckage of your ship. You see the bodies of Anne of Kilcathry and Bad Henry flung through the air, your brother um, falling away. Um, you see your treasure scattering to the winds. Uh, you have fog of war uh, ready here. Um, as you are falling, um, you uh, look around you and see the wreckage of this ship all around you. And you know that if Torquellon has fallen, the sky ships of your father, like what will happen to the rest of the Forgotten Fleet, you don't know. And your hearing stone is still gone. That halfling took it. There is a potential future for you on the throne of Kale Stoop if you can make it there from here. Um, uh, what's going through Marcus's head? As yeah. <laughs> yeah, Marcus is floating, and you know, just this <laughs> him being in the air and flying, and him growing up in a sky kingdom, this actually does take him back. He has seen the world from this view. Maybe not as smoky, but <laughs> um, any, any, you know, he finally has what he wants. He killed his brother, but, you know, at the cost of Bad Henry and Anne, and, and, and he's, he's wondering if that's what he really wanted. He's wondering if, if you know, if that's what he really wanted. He knows that it's not going to be easy to get back on the throne. He knows he, he's going to have some opposition. And at the end of the day, political bullshit got him into this. And is he willing to put himself through more political bullshit? Uh, he's not too worried about his ship, funny enough, because coming from an affluent uh, kingdom, he he's always had it, but... He, he, now that he's lost his crew, his ship, and a lot of his treasure, he now knows that if he loses his fellow lieutenants, then he would have lost everything. And that in this moment, and the next moves he makes when he finally hits the ground, is probably going to be the most important thing he's done in his life. That moment of determination fills Marcus as he plummets through the sky and the smoke and you ready fog of war and focus on that determination. You are a quick guy, both mentally and in terms of your dexterity, and this is going to be the most important act of dexterity you've ever done in your life. Uh, Leland. Falling as the wreckage passes by him, and he's he's accepted kind of this this failure after failure after failure. His eyes close as he just feels the wind rushing past him, thinking that all the sacrifices he's made for the Lord that is now gone. You know, what what have I accomplished? Nothing. What what reason is there to remain? and endure. Can I roll a perception check? Yes, you can. Oh, never mind. Add advantage. Oh, there you go, yeah, add advantage, <laughs> yep. Natural 20. Oh! Do I happen to see a parachuting halfling? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my god. One um, last chance of oh vengeance. You do sense yes! a parachuting halfling. 
used smell on the wind a parachuting halfling sense of ham. Ham. In this deep pit of despair, suddenly this spark of life reignites. <laughs> I'm taking you with me. <laughs> As you fall and plummet, you're like, suddenly you're like, I have to survive to destroy this halfling. Uh, you feel something plummeting near you, by the way, a little bit ahead of you. You actually catch up as you kind of are determined to hit the ground. Um, uh, and you see wrapped in thorns and vines is Miles, um, who is plummeting near you. And you see he's way more fucked up than you. And he knows this is it for him. Um, you see, you're falling side by side for a second. He looks over and uh, with great sorrow, you see he's going through the same thing you're going through. Looks over and goes, Is it true? You killed Declan! It is, but his sacrifice may restore our Dark Lord. Oh, can it, you hag! <laughs> you can <laughs> He goes, goes uh, and looks up and says, you know something? You were always his favorite. His first. What are you supposed to do when your entire soul is devoted to something and you know that you'll never be in first place? As much as you want to think that's something only you understand, it's something I deal with every day of this entire endless existence as well. <laughs> as I look over towards the, the fire-emitting woman <laughs> in the other direction. Uh, you see that Miles looks at you, um, uh, uh, looks at you and it's the points of blue fire. Uh, you see he takes his helmet off, his ghostly and smiles at him and says, you really think that? You have no idea then, do you? I'm sorry I failed you, and I failed every other thing that's been important to me. Says, not you, Leyland. You have no idea about the Lord of Shadows. If you believe what you say, then you are a fool. And uh, make an insight check. Uh, that would be. Nine. <laughs> uh, something is lost in you. Uh, 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 Miles knows something you don't. Um, what, 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 what do you mean? <laughs> that thing, the, you, uh, uh, uh <laughs> we're about to bring it No! No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, no! <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, and you are left with this huge question mark of what he could have meant. Um, uh, uh, and, um, uh, Maggie, <laughs> you were for this guy. Um, <laughs> just pain, fire. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, you are, I mean, your focus has gone from your own impending death to being in labor. Um, <laughs> Um, you uh, you exit your rage. Uh -huh. um, you are just fully concentrating on, you know, uh, give me this thing to say, uh, make a... Birth now, here's check? Here's a fun part <laughs> as a DM, where I get to decide what the associated skill check is with giving birth. I'll tell you, animal athletics. Handling. <laughs> <laughs> animal handling. Animal handling. <laughs> um, I'm going to say, go ahead and make a... Um, a const a flat constitution check for me. Seventeen. Seventeen. Awesome. Um, uh, uh, you managed to in midair fall in through volcanic ash and sparks start to push. You're, you're like not finishing it, and you you're like ah, you're giving birth to this demon. You hear something going. <laughs> Fire, green and blue flames exploding <laughs> out of you, and you hit. Boom, 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 boom. All four of you hit at the same time. Um, hit what? <laughs> uh, hit the, the ground. ground. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Reka, you take. 
uh, 71 points of damage. <laughs> uh, what are you at? 107. 107. <laughs> uh, you landed on our fucking fine. You <laughs> went to the crater. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Leland, do you take 60, 66 points of damage? All righty. <laughs> Uh, what is your hit point total? Uh, negative eight. <laughs> so I am unconscious and dying. Unconscious and dying. Um, I think. Get me to zero, I dare you. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Five hit points. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, Marcus, we have a skill check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, this is going to be a, I'm just going to say th that attacking this thing at, ex this is this is literally the like, if an elevator falls and I jump in the last <laughs> second. <laughs> um, uh, cool. Um, uh, uh, so this is, we're gonna do a flat dexterity check. No skill, no proficiency bonus to this. Okay. DC well, 20 dexterity check. All right. <sighs> oh. <laughs> it's gonna be uh, 11. <laughs> you get Fog of War, slash the ship, and teleport, and you have only ever teleported with Fog of War, moving under your own power. You learn an interesting thing about the physics of Fog of War, which is that as you exit the teleportation effect, you maintain the velocity. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of hitting the ground going straight down, you shoot at like 90 miles an hour going horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> 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 yeah, skipping like a stone on water. Uh, <laughs> um, you take ten. Uh, you take uh, sixty-one points of damage. Uh, what's Marcus at? I am at thirty-five. Um, you've fallen out of ships before, and you. <laughs> so yeah, you're. So you turn your fall from being lethal into <laughs> and just stand up. <laughs> um, after fully, uh, after fully wiping out, um, Matt. Let's go ahead and get that d20 out. We're gonna roll some death saving throws. Yes, we are. Roll number one. Natural one. Two failures. Two failures. <laughs> wait, wait, how far? I'm, how far away are we? Are we? Are we? Quite far. Really? Split up by a great distance. How That's far away am I? How far away are we? The uh, great bubble fires. Uh, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Um, we are going. I will ask you guys to do um, uh, a. Everyone here, make a dexterity check. Uh, everyone? Uh, uh, every, no, every, this is actually just our, just our flyers. Yeah. Make a dexterity check. Like, no, at you, disadvantage? Jeremy? Huh? Uh, that's not a disadvantage. It includes Jeremy as well. Okay. Eight. Nat 20. Woo! Ooh, baby! Oh. Before <gasps> your second roll of the, of this, uh, the Jeremy bubble lands and pops, and Jeremy is fully restored to his normal form. Um, uh, next to, uh, you're right next to Leland. Cool. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I have a potion of greater healing. Will that, will that bring him back, or do I have to do, like, a medicine check or something to sort of stabilize him first? No, you do not have to stabilize him first. You guys take an action. I'm trying to think about what is the most fair thing here. You sure. fly down to the ground. Leland's just made his death saving throw. How about this? Each of you, because Jeremy is the one that rolled the nat 20, you... Jeremy deserves the credit. How about this? We'll, just do, do, we'll do initiative. So you roll initiative, you roll initiative, and we'll just determine the order of that. It'll be another death save if Leland goes first, or you'll administer the potion before the next death saving throw. I typically take advantage on initiative. Do I do that you here do as well? You have advantage on initiative. Okay. Eight, eight. 12 plus 3, 15. 15. 13. 13. You go first. 
You administer the potion. Uh, how many D4 is that? Did you feel a certain amount of hit points? Yeah, that is uh, 44 plus 4. And mm. I, and I, I, oh, I take off Leyland's helmet and uh, <laughs> open his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm covered in Jeremy mucus Ew. and uh, like still smell vaguely of like bog cloud. Like, All right, here we go, buddy. Oh, don't go tell him yet. Incredible. <clears throat> <laughs> what, 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 what happened? What, where are we? What, hi. Jeremy saved you. <laughs> <laughs> you owe him a kiss? <laughs> you owe him a kiss. <laughs> and like in a soft haze and somewhat just completely bell rung persona that I am right now, I look over at Jeremy. <laughs> Five extra mouths. <laughs> <laughs> They all they smile and all the mouths like <laughs> be- meld together in one giant <laughs> smile. It wasn't until this moment that I think uh, Leland ever appreciated the true beauty of this magnificent beast <laughs> who craw- crawls out of the crater he's left in the rock floor. <laughs> Jeremy, thank you so much. That's so cute. That's oh, that's that's my wrist. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh. Um, you see that uh, that Jeremy. Um, uh, takes a little bit of your Vinguri blood and uh, pockets it away uh, in uh, in his body somewhere. And you see oh, that he sort of changes color for a second, goes into this weird gray, and then you see pops into a translucent ghost form. You can see through for a moment, and then goes back to normal. <laughs> I look back over you with like one swollen eye, shock, <laughs> and I'm like. Talk about uh, he's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, he's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um, yes, we're gonna resolve the scene a little, a little ways away from you on the other side of a hill. Mm. You're in a crater. Um, uh, you feel something thud on the ground next to you as you are uh, giving birth. Mm-hmm. Um, you look over to you as you're pushing uh, uh, this sort of like. <sighs> And you uh, hear something thud with a sickening crack and a lurch. Um, you look over next to you and you see, um, covered in blood, um, struggling to breathe, his suit torn to pieces. No! <laughs> Is John Feathers. Uh, John looks over at you, uh, his eyes flutter, and he goes, It's gonna be okay. No, it's not. It's gonna be okay. No, it's I need not. you to breathe. I need you to breathe. My you see, he puts out a wing, <laughs> touches your hand, and he goes, Maggie, look at me. Yes. I'm a giant bird in a suit. Yes, I'm I'm trying. You, you need to breathe, okay? okay. Um, and um, uh, <laughs> go ahead, make another constitution save for me. 12 plus 10. 22. Um, you begin to feel something. <laughs> You feel claws moving inside you. Um, John goes, it's okay. This is natural. Really? This is natural. Okay. All right, you're about to lay an egg. Okay. What? Egg's gonna come out. What's that? It's an egg. I assume. I don't know. <laughs> no, don't use your science on me. Is okay, it an egg or is it not so, an egg? I'll be honest. I don't even really know how my whole shit works. Oh, so, God, read a book. Haven't you met a female eagle? Of course. I have a girlfriend. I get how it works, but you I just have don't. have a girlfriend? Yeah. You never told me. Yeah, Samantha Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> of the Philadelphia Eagles? <laughs> um, we're gonna roll, we're gonna roll um, uh, first uh, death savings row for John. I'll roll it in front of the board. Okay. This is John's first uh, death savings row. 10, that is a success. Um, he looks over at you and says, okay, I know it's hard. Single parent is hard. Yeah. But you can look at me. Yeah. It's gonna be okay. All right. Okay. I just want you to breathe and focus. Okay. What are you feeling right now? It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. It's all right. Oh my god. Um, eighteen. Another success. Um, you know, all right. We're in this together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna get out of here. I'm gonna teach your kid how to fly. Oh my god. All right? Teach him how to throw a. What do you throw? 
I don't throw anything. We have bad that we mostly do talents. That's mostly what we do. Great. Teach him how to claw uh, stuff. Yes, I'll teach him how to claw. Him. You know it's gonna be a point. Um, I do. Rolls another death save. Twelve. Oh. He stabilizes. He says, "Boy, thank you." And you see that uh, stemming from your fingertips, red flame, not hot but just warm, enters John's wings, goes, and you watch as his wounds heal. <sighs> and a power of healing flows through you from your own blood that you have never seen your father or Zalonaj nor any other demon do. Your own miracle. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and John looks and goes, I like the sound of that. Uncle John's not a bad call. And he stabilizes at zero, goes into unconsciousness, and you hear a cry uh, coming base of your hips and it's not an egg. <laughs> <laughs> um, you look down and see the most beautiful little bright purple baby with two little horn nubbins, sweet little cloven hooves, um, and a little forked tail. Um, that is uh, crying down below you. Uh, its eyes are pools of jet black ichor. It uh, looks up at you with a look of complete death and desire to dominate and rule the world. And uh, a swirling vortex of red, hellish energy goes from its navel back to your body as it looks up. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, and you take your child up into your arms, uh, and the heir to the throne of blood rests in your hands. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Is it a boy or is it a girl? Uh, it's a little boy. Oh. <laughs> wow, I don't know how to raise a boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, wonderful. Um, you guys... Uh, 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 Lilith, uh, you land, um, and you see, uh, this, you know, uh, uh, you see Maggie next to an unconscious John Feathers holding a little baby with a swirling fire umbilical cord, um, and you see Maggie lying on the ground there, uh, injured but holding, uh, her child. She's beautiful. I know. <laughs> she, so she reaches out and... Touches his forehead. It's <laughs> beautiful. Thank you. And you touch his forehead, and you see that a sweet little um, uh, black spider mark appears <gasps> on his forehead. Looks <laughs> for eight little spikes, and this sweet little uh, horrifying spider blessing rests <laughs> on his head. Oh, thank you for the spider blessing, Lilith. As she looks around and sees her friends only people she really cares about, her children, in dire danger, this new life. She sees the crown that Sockhorn is holding, and she realizes that none of this would have come to pass if it hadn't been for some stupid promotion. <laughs> <laughs> that moment, a fire of hatred and vengeance is lit in her cold, jaded heart. And she says aloud, there will be no Dark Lord upon the throne, not ever again. <laughs> is that a challenge to the baby? How would Maggie interpret it? Is that a challenge? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I just meant your, I'm sorry. Your, no, it's okay. It's your so boyfriend was a piece of shit. No, I get that. <laughs> I get that. Yeah, I he get that. He really was. He should have done the right thing. I mean, he, and we should have gotten married, but now I'm just kind of, real, through this whole thing, I didn't need him once, and that's kind of cool. We will create a world in which your little one is safe. I you guys, yeah, you guys all congregate here in the crater, stumbling. Um, uh, some of you are at very low hit points right now, um, but you guys are all here in the crater together. You you can hear, not you can't hear, but well off in the distance, you are aware of the tramp of the forces of light. And I uh, uh, I throw the crown on the ground. Uh, I just say, well, 
We all fucked up pretty bad here, I think. Uh, I'm gonna be straight with all of you. I was pretty sure there was a non-zero chance that Zawal Nash may have reneged on our agreement when all this was done. Truth is, no one really likes me or my whole thing, or Jeremy's thing. We're not great to be around. And, uh, kind of just that Zalnaj, uh, at least had the decency to say he would maybe give us a shot. That shot's kind of gone. Um, so I think maybe this crown stands a, maybe an okay chance of this all going all right, possibly. Pretty slim. I don't know if you should be wearing it, if the baby should be wearing it. Probably not, Leland, but maybe, I don't know. Um, but I think, uh, I think I'm done here. Uh, I don't think, uh, I don't think Zalnaj has, he's given me the best chance of my swamp surviving. Uh, I don't think the forces of good are either, so I think I'm just gonna make a last stand back in my swamp, because I think that's all I got left. No, guys. Based on everything I'm hearing and everything I'm feeling, the only one that matters is the one standing around us right now, not that crown. But that crown still may be my, our only way out of this. With wow. Tavian dead, I am the rightful heir to Kel Stoop. And my shitty brother and father did align with the forces of good. As an heir, I may be free from crimes. This isn't a go-to plan, but it's the best plan we have. And as an heir, I can grant y'all sanctuary or clemency or whatever <laughs> back at Kale Stoop. We give this crown to them. They do whatever weird hero shit they want to do. We go back to my place and we live how we want. Here's the thing. Each of us is poised in a unique way to make a better world for all the rest of us. Oh, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear. I think. What, all of my... Don't say that. No, that no. You're totally no. poised to make what a better... What did we talk about? No. Stop saying bad things well, about my friend. this is an objective statement. <laughs> my entire divination abilities have absconded is... I think an important note. That being said, I have I reinvested think, I think. in myself and my instincts. I think. But I will not be putting my name in any bucket. I will say, Lilith is right. Your husband, the king, is dead. You are the only standing royalty. You shall rule the lands of men and elves. Oh, we have an heir Jared. to the blood keep throne. The swamps and the nature. Yeah. You can be guarded by Sakbar, and you have your Sky Kingdom. L Leland, I'm sure there's something. Someone's yeah, got to find mayor something. Of the dead. Yeah. Yeah. This could be like a Leland doesn't a need a kingdom. Leland needs one thing. Well, he the head of Galfast Hamhead. The yeah. ham Is there of a Galfast. greater crown than that? <laughs> Here's the thing though, is the blood keep is crumbling and the the men and the men and their armies are coming towards us. Is there a way from what we read in the book or from your visions to somehow imbue the power that remains in that crown into maintaining the blood keep but without summoning the dark lord? Oh, I guess I could try. Believe in yourself. Look, as the resident magnificent failure. <laughs> and you are uh, magnificent. I, I, I am talking. He's wonderful at failing. Um, one, allow me to be the, uh, the basis of your self-comparison. That's the best I can offer you. Um, <laughs> but also know. These tricks that you've relied upon for so long, this divination, these spirits, these things outside that give you purpose, that's nothing. 
The true strength you need is in here. And you know why? Because, as I've learned, if a frying pan wielding fucking half <laughs> can be unkillable, can be possible for destroying a ship, escaping a volcano, <laughs> parachuting across these lands, and evade the entirety of the Dark Lord's trusted circle of generals. You can do anything you want. Right. Your, your metaphor feels a little too personal. <laughs> <laughs> You can do anything. <laughs> there are no rules anymore. Uh, yeah, 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 and, and, okay, like, you're 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 you're, 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 you're losing the point. You're losing the point. Okay, 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 okay. No, no. Your point is taken. Your spell cards. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> uh, it's an oh. RP episode. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, I would love cool. to. Yes, the, the point is made, um, <laughs> albeit desperate. Um, and I, I would like to interpret the, the book based on Lilith's decision. Interpret the book decision. of... Um, uh, uh, of what is, now that we have a crown imbued mm -hmm. with something, what the options actually are. Um, you uh, take the book out uh, uh, and you look at it for a second, um, the through line through Effing's life Don't of, do this. <laughs> of uh, a dad that never gave an emotional reaction to anything, a husband that you decided to marry just because he liked you, mm. uh, and spending countless hours concocting dark rituals to bring spirits to you so that you would be able to like yourself because other beings gave you permission to. And you look at a book, and now that the fucking cacophony of all those elven spirits you always kept in your head, Azra, Orgra, Abasil, the spirit guardians, everyone you've always kept around to constantly check in and ask, how am I doing, how am I doing, how do I look, how is my magic, what are all the things that are worthy about me? That's all gone, and the only thing left in your mind is your voice and what you think. Effin gets to decide right now if she's good at magic or not. Okay. Um, okay, so, so she, yeah, you know what? I'm glad these spells are a little weird. Um, <laughs> she opens the book and she sees a bunch of pictures. And, and, and designs and runes that God knows what they mean anymore. And, and before she turns one more page, she looks at each of her compatriots who know how duplicitous and, uh, I guess, capricious she's been. How, how, much do we need this? Our very lives and those of everyone we care about depend on it. Um, and she does realize that 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 for once in her life, her magic is, uh, or herself, there's magic within herself, but it actually, it was nothing compared to the magic that she got from her friends. <laughs> and and the, the bonding moments that they had every time the Dark Lord would issue forth an order and they'd like share a glance and nudge each other and be like, what an idiot, he's doing <laughs> the wrong thing or the right thing maybe, but they just, yeah, wanted to share those moments. So in, in, in the moments that they had as friends, she decides she's not ready to let that go. Um, you, uh, look down at the book, and, um, for the first time in such a long time, you realize, and it's always been a part of you, it's always been in there, but it was just always drowned out by the other voices. 
um, you have a moment where your ego is totally destroyed. It's gone. You have no thought of yourself. You just are. It, it, there's a moment where you're thinking, my friends need me. And the my just disappears and just becomes friends need. Friends need. And you are completely focused on doing this task to save the people you love with not a thought for yourself. You look at the book and are lost in the book in the first true vision you've ever had. You don't notice anything going on yourself. All of you guys are blasted back 10 feet as Efink rises into the air, not in photo negative, but surrounded by glyphs of pure white and black and gray elven magic, and then blasting into resplendent reds and greens and blues. All of the different truths of the world, good and evil, surround. And you see a vision of someone possessed of the light of the first gods, elven blood back from the very first songs of the creation of the world. I think you don't notice any of that. You're looking at the book for clues. Um, and you watch this miracle occur. The book flutters open, and as the pages move, you read past the runes into the writing of the runes and see clearly in your mind's eye young Zaunaj at a fountain of blood, the vision that so scared you earlier today and when you emerged from your pool. You see a young Zaunaj, broken, weeping, approach this fountain of blood. You see this fountain in the very bottom bowels of the blood keep, the deepest, most cavernous point past everything towards the hot core of this world. Zalunaj is weeping. You see he collapses at the fountain of blood and rising from the fountain of blood, there is a figure hooded, face invisible, just empty cowl, hands wrapped around a, a long pole in a boat floating in the blood. The boatman looks at Zalunaj who weeps and says, they have done it. They have banished Dogmoth to the land beyond. I am alone. Dogmoth has made me leader. Just fucking crazy. Lilith is the obvious choice. It says, I, I, I'm gonna fuck this up. I know I'm gonna fuck this up. He looks up and goes, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's supposed to be me. The boatman croaks and says, Logmoth is gone. There must always be a vessel to lead the forces of evil in this world. You will learn the law. You will find ways of creating your own power. But you must sacrifice everything to claim that which you need. The boatman extends his hand and you see that Zaulnaj reaches into his chest, trades out his own soul for something in the shape of a gleaming crown, a fiery crown in his hand. The boatman extends it, he takes it. Looking into the fountain of blood, the boat and the boatman sink back into the fountain. He looks at the flaming crown, he says, I am no longer myself. I am only the crown. I would give up everything for this crown. The crown goes into his chest, and you recognize the secret of this crown more, and the secret of what it means to rule over the world and to be the leader of the forces of evil. What you have concealed in the crown that you have forged back uh, in the forge in the scary volcano that is not Zaulnaj's soul. Zaulnaj's soul is in the lands beyond, being punched and kicked by Godmoth still. <laughs> He's still getting the shit beaten out of him. That's where Zaulnaj is, you saw it. So the part of him that was left in Declan's crown that is still left here in uh, Leland's crown is the soul of what it means to rule here. And the crown that you hold uh, has within it the potential to see a new world and a new definition for evil, a new definition for the forces of darkness. All that you would need to do is bring that crown to that fountain of blood. Um, there were no eyes rolling back in my head. Um, and 
she just, yeah, she doesn't gasp back to life. It was, it's almost like she was reading. She does all the glyph things. She sets back and she's normal as hell and uh, is like, tells you what happened. I, wait, what do you mean? It just, like, there was a lot of lights, but you were completely dry the whole time. So I was like very confused if you were actually <laughs> doing that. You are full dry. I, I, didn't even, I didn't even recognize yeah, you. I was like, how do you do magic dry? I thought you had to be wet to dry. I thought that was a thing for yeah. you. Yeah. May I say, I think. That is the hottest you've ever looked, darling. Truly oh, I radiant. Don't, I don't think we need to discuss my outward appearance anymore. <gasps> oh! Well, Whoa! I mean, it's whatever you want. It's whatever you want. Oh, yes. Effie, where did you find your power? Oh, within all of you. Oh, well, I was entirely wrong. <laughs> Oh, but I'm very happy for you. No, wait, that's no, wait, that's what wonderful. Did you think I was going to say? No, no, nothing, nothing. That was great. I'm so. <laughs> no, no. You were, you were magnificent. Oh. Maybe, uh, maybe I don't have to go back to the swamp. Oh, please. Maybe don't. we'll give it. We'll give uh, it one more go here. We do have one last decision to make. Who's gonna take the power? Um, I think the most important thing is we do decide what the definition of evil has to be. And I think it has a lot to do um, with not necessarily one ruler. Are we getting ahead of ourselves? I mean, like, you know, sometimes you try to imagine, like, success and you imagine, like, the trappings of success before you actually, like, do the work to, like, be successful. It's like, 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 committee, maybe. I feel like, like it's all well good to imagine, like, yes. who's going to be wearing the crown, but, like, having deja vu. we got all four. <laughs> this is a crazy <laughs> lot of shit to do. Right, right, right. 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 Horse is for the cards. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, wonderful. If you just want to take a second, we'll do another short rest here mm -hmm. in the caldera after okay. you guys have all crashed. Uh, do your mm. stuff. Uh, and then after you get a chance to do so, let's just go around the table and say what our current HP are. Uh, and Reka, we can start with you if you want to let me know what your HP are. I'm back at max, 220. <laughs> <laughs> after giving birth. <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, easy. <laughs> after using all my hit dice, I am at 95. Awesome. Uh, after using the, the rest of mine, I'm at 42. But I, I want to reserve the right to heal myself and other people cool. after this. Yes, absolutely. Um, I've used all mine, Jeremy has used all his, and I've given Jeremy a potion of greater healing. We are both back up at max, 161 for me, and 91 for Jeremy. Um, and Lilith? At uh, 114. Awesome. I had no hit die, so I just, you know, stood there while everyone rested. Are you still at five or whatever? I'm, yeah, I burned all my hit die after the last fight because I got beat up pretty yeah. bad last time. So where time. are you? Uh, you? 35. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm going to heal. I'm, I'm a squishy Protect the rogue! <laughs> I shouldn't be you want going potion, head buddy? to head as much as I do. <laughs> hey, I brewed up something pretty, mm. pretty tasty if yeah, you want what something. Yeah, yeah. I'll, you I'll, I'll slurp on that. I've got, I've got uh, two more potions of greater healing I'll left. I'll slurp it. Is my son a right, uh, different I'll player bet. than me? Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, your son is an NPC. Um, uh, a, the, uh, you see that in a blast of flame, the umbilical cord disappears, and you are holding oh, your... I wanted to eat that. <laughs> 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 uh, incredible. Um, uh, but yeah, you're holding your your bouncing baby boy. Um, uh, so but I, I will play your baby. For the most part, your baby is just extremely newborn and is uh, sort of hugging onto your body Great. and now being very still. Great. Mm -hmm. This is a baby Mario situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, that, I still scarred by How that How did you game. know one of my name options? Uh, you can also see that there is a, a stabilized but unconscious John Feathers on the ground next to you guys. <sighs> John. Uh, oh, can I do a do medicine check or Please. animal handling? I would. I, I'd like to help with animal handling. Cool. Uh, give me an advantage animal. Uh, give me an, an advantage medicine check. Advantage medicine check. Great. That is seventeen plus. You said medicine. Yeah. Uh, so that is seventeen plus eight. Uh, we're looking at Whoa, uh, twenty-five. Yeah, 20, yeah, twenty-five. Um, you see that uh, John is actually is still at zero, still stabilized, mm. but returns to consciousness, looks up and goes, <clears throat> Hey, so far, how you doing? The kid all right? Uh, 
I look over at uh, at Maggie. Uh, oh, hey there, bud. He looks over, he sees sort of like nuzzles his beak against his head. He goes, all right. He's beautiful, Maggie. Thank you. He's really beautiful. Really, thank you. He's a lucky kid. Um, well, I'll tell you what, gang, I think, um, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna call it here. I'm lucky to be alive. I'm feeling something in my wing fucked up. I think staying here, high altitude, uh, for a little while is gonna be good for me. You don't want to go underground to the deepest cavern of the Blood Keep and find a fountain of blood? Yeah, I'm fully good, my man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> John, I do appreciate that. We're going to miss you so much if you stay. He, he smiles and goes, You know, it's an interesting thing because the eagles are often called the freest of all the races of Elna. And, um, you know, it doesn't really mean anything to be free if you can't choose to go off on a wild tangent, join up with the bad guys, buy a suit and a skin hat, and make six great friends all in the same day. Sorry, seven, Jeremy. And he was up. Uh, 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 he, and eight. And he says, and the little guy, he goes, you got a, <coughs> you got a name for the little guy in mind yet? Well, I was debating, you know, do I name him after his father? Uh, but I don't, wish to name my son after a man who couldn't commit and who ruled without a soul an evil land that could just be evil but was also soulless and evil. I thought I instead would name him after somebody who tries to have a good heart and truly fails so much, so astonishingly, <laughs> all the time, but continues to get back up with a purpose. Leland. Junior. <laughs> you watch as she says that. Leland mouths the word, John. <laughs> Fully expecting it to be John. <laughs> Goes, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm naming my son after the name of yours that I prefer. What? Why me? I've... <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I, I don't think I've really brought anything to the table ever. <laughs> I've failed my purpose that I was brought back mm -hmm. to life for. I've done nothing but been an anchor attached to all of you this entire time. I'm not even certain why Jeremy thought to bring me back from the ground there. I... Leland. First of all, Jeremy's an excellent judge of character. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, we've all fucked up so monumentally. I mean, to the extent that you are a failure, you are hanging out in a big group of, uh, I mean, I haven't been back to my swamp in months. I have no idea what's going on there. I mean, we, we've all really beefed it hard. And, you know, I don't think that you failed as hard as you think you have. When you're only paying attention to your own failures, of course you're gonna put everyone else on a pedestal. You won't notice the world fucking up too. Yeah, I totally saw when you said like, I'm gonna make things chill and froze that guy. I was like, that's tight. Uh, but, you know, everyone didn't hear, so I pretended like I didn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Marcus, I, it's beautiful. I, mean, yeah, yeah. I don't begrudge that at all, but that's, th thank you. Uh, Remember when I suggested we actually fuck off and join the good side? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was very confusing. <laughs> uh, so I'm just saying. You only fell off that ship in the first place because you were trying not to hit me. Um, Leland, uh, yes, that's, you realize that's true. You, and uh, Leland, as you sit there kind of confused by all of this camaraderie and friendship, uh, you see that, like, your hand's at your side. You feel something. Uh, Maggie's standing right next to you. And you look down and you see a tiny little hand <laughs> wrapped around your finger. Um, and you see in, with jet black eyes, this little newborn infant looks up to you and goes, Neil. <laughs> Oh, 
Maybe, maybe the Leland destined for greatness was not this one. But if I'm going to serve something, I'll happily be the one to carry the name farther than I could. Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Leland Jr. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, kneel before me. Uh, uh, yes, no, I, 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 yes, of course. Uh, I'm very good at it. I've been practicing for 200 wow. years. Oh. Oh. Your first command. <laughs> <laughs> and you, in this, in this like sweet, wonderful moment, like as, as Leland kneels before the tiny child, clutching his finger, he looks up with a big smile. <laughs> Suddenly, like the wind shifts, the temperature drops about 40 degrees, his eyes burn with vibrant blue flames, and says, On this day, let it be known that this soul is bound in eternity to you, Leland Jr. For all of the decades to this way forward, I will slay all that you require. I will be at your right side. I will ensure no harm comes to you. Can't you keep anything at like 80%? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I will pick up diapers sometimes. <laughs> and we'll clean your bottom. I will ensure uh, all the corners of the furniture are well padded. <laughs> you see that the baby uh, just smiles, a weird gummy smile, and just wipes frost off its face. <laughs> um, uh, wonderful. Uh, uh, so you all stand in this caldera. Uh, 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 yeah, John Feathers. Uh, you know, I think maybe falling out of the sky was the best thing ever. <laughs> um, I think you may be right. Really put things into perspective. Um, uh, uh, do uh, I think uh, you you. Uh, did you relay the, the what you saw to us? Yes, I did. Um, yes. Uh, do we have a? Do we know like anything other than just like it's there's a fountain of blood. It's deep in the blood keep, and we don't really know how to get there. Mm-hmm. Uh, question. I have. <laughs> I'm just going through all my potions. Like, what do I got here? What do I got? I brewed up a lot of stuff here. I have a potion of clairvoyance, mm -hmm. which can let you see a, a place now that you have seen before. Okay. If if Epping used that, could she see where this blood fountain is and maybe get a sense of like, like, I don't know, passages, ways in, anything to like kind of like get yeah. our bearings or something? Absolutely, like that? absolutely. That's no sweat. That's not even a role. If you use that potion of clairvoyance, you can absolutely find a way through the blood keep. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, I did cure wounds myself, so I'm at fifty-five, and I'm. Can you, uh, can you hit me with that too? Huh? Yes, I can. Um, <laughs> blast blast these wounds. I'll, <laughs> blast I'll these use that wounds. as a, a second level as well, and that'll be. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. Okay. <laughs> I rolled. I rolled two ones. Um, so you get seven hit points. Isn't that the second time? <laughs> Oh, we this is on a DX, so the odds are the, higher. Yeah, the uh, odds are higher, but not yeah. still. Still, that is <laughs> oh, impressive. Yeah. Still depressing. <laughs> <laughs> depressing and uh, impressive and, and uh, dumb. Um, okay, cool. But yes, I. I also, I mean, I don't. Should I should I heal our friend John so he's not just up here on? John looks and says, it "says the only eagle that saw me wearing this suit is dead, so you don't worry about that." Right. <laughs> um, Man, that's ominous as hell and rad. Oh, <laughs> I meant to tell you, John. After all this, I feel like we can make it. Meet me at Kale Stoop. I still owe you a nest. He says, hell yeah. And I owe you a drink, my friend. <laughs> Turn my life around. He drinks? <laughs> <laughs> I never have before. Glasses are hard with beaks, but... Mm. I'm gonna figure it out. I mean, he pants a suit and a glass of alcohol. I feel like it's a new world for you, John. It's a brand new day. You're amazing. Good luck, Leland Jr. It's oh. a pleasure to meet you. Wanna say, second option for the name? John Feathers the Eagle the Baby. <laughs> <laughs> you see, he says, I'm honored, man. That's great. All right, you kids get out of here, huh? Yes, sir. Goodbye, Feathers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, I take uh, the potion of clairvoyance out of my bandolier and give it to Evan. Whatever you need to use it. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> instinct. 
like I, the way that she does things is like the most effortless, graceful way that you've ever seen a human move. It's like she learned kung fu, but instead of kung fu, it's like ballet, <laughs> um, and, and everything she does is like picture perfect, and the curves of her body do everything right. Um, but yeah, she's not. She's no longer concerned with that. Oh. <laughs> uh, Clairvoyance goes down, and you see a perfect trail through the blood keep. Um, uh, leading down to this original, it's, it's like a tomb or a temple, almost to forces of evil more ancient even than Gogmoth, if possible. Rather things nameless and unpersonified and ideas of what it means to have wickedness in the world, deep, deep, deep in the heart of the Blood Keep. Um, and you see your path there. Also, clairvoyance on the blood keep in general, you see chaos. Um, <laughs> just fucking chaos. Like, you know, the word got out. People are fucking looting. It's, you know, got, like telling a bunch of goblins and trolls and orcs, like, hey, uh, ding, 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 the good guys are on the way. We got no boss. Woohoo! Like, it's just fucking uh, wild in the blood keep right now. Uh, and the only person that was in charge, Olog, just fell out of the sky with you guys. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so you guys head off uh, towards. The blood keep all together. Um, uh, With that, I mean, w were there any, I guess, secret entrances that like didn't make us go full, full, like full hog into? Maybe the there's blood like a cube? bird that's like <laughs> clacking at a stone at a very specific time, but he's definitely gonna be clacking there at the time we need. <laughs> <laughs> when the thrush. Knocks. <laughs> um, uh, uh, incredible. Uh, well, yeah. Go ahead, and if anyone wants to make a stealth check. Um, uh, and I'll allow you guys to like basically make the stealth check. Um, can I? Can I? <gasps> What's that? <laughs> I rolled a natural twenty. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> you know everything. You know every room and hallway um, and tunnel um, uh, that goes through this place. Um, uh, you begin to uh, yeah. You you guys uh, head off to the blood keep. As you begin to go, um, so you guys leave John Feathers. He feels alright. He's like high up on a thing. You guys go. You like take a bridge over a lava flow that's beginning to like destroy this orc village. The lava is like just spreading out across the plains now, uh, which is hopefully slowing the advance of the forces of light a little bit. And you guys see that you even if you wanted to just flee, there's no way to. You're hemmed in by lava on one side and the forces of light on the other. It's like the only way out is in. You know, like just have yeah. to go deeper. Um, before we leave, uh, is Olog's dead body there? You do not see Olog's dead body there. Uh, you can take time to search if you want, but you uh, do not I'd, see. I'd like to do a quick cursory search. Yeah, give me an investigate check. Okay. Ah, it's an eight. Cool, no worries. Uh, anyone else can make one that wants to as well, but... Um, 15 plus... One sixteen. Fifteen plus one sixteen. Uh, uh, you can go for it if you want to. I'm looking for Hamhead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Twenty. Twenty for Hamhead. Well, cool. Uh, I will invest. Uh, Jeremy and I will both investigate. I guess. Uh, Jeremy's not very good at it unless he's just sniffing or something. <laughs> unless we I can do just like a general perception of sniffing for Olog. Um, but mm -hmm. here we go. Uh, ooh, not good. That is a seven minus. It's, uh, it's investigation is uh, intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's a three for Jeremy, and uh, for me, that is a four. <laughs> Uh, What's going on? Hell yeah. <laughs> um, uh, with that twenty, I will say that you go out for uh, looking for Hamhead, um, uh, and you find actually where Olog landed. Number one. Um, you see there's no body there. There's some blood for sure, uh, some debris around. Um, and you spot a couple tears staining the the rock oh, as though someone <laughs> as though someone wept here. Um, uh, <laughs> you wanted to die so bad. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, uh, as though someone really badly wanted to die here. You also do see a big scrap of sailcloth of a parachute and tracks leading away. Um, I will roll something back here. Okay. Uh, Leland arrives at the scrap of sails and you see the trademark footprints of a shoeless, barefoot little wonder um, headed in uh, and you know, the wind blows sparks and ash move past you. You see lava flowing underneath you. 
Um, you see the footprints are about an hour and a half old at this point. Um, and they are heading in the opposite direction from the blood keep towards the forces of light. Okay. Uh, I pull out my rune blade. Look in the direction, begin to follow the tracks, and take like three steps and stop and look back at the rest of them all in the middle of their search towards the blood keep. Look back and take another step towards the tracks after him head stop. Close my eyes, take a deep breath, look back at Maggie, Leland Jr. A day will come. <laughs> Damn it. It will come. I turn back and head back to join them, going, hey, hey, it's still alive, fuck, it's still out there somewhere. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, your Hexblade curse rings out across the land, uh, and somewhere far in the distance, a little whistling halfling turns around. <laughs> right, well, that'll be the day, sir. <laughs> <laughs> One day we won't just kill that halfling. We'll kill all the halflings. <laughs> That's beautiful, <laughs> so far. Uh, and you, I, I, we never specified because I had thrown the crown on the ground, but I guess I'll pick it back up cool. just so we know as, who who, who I'm in possession it. of it. I guess. Right yeah. Now. As before before they go down, um, we'll, we'll, we'll listen. Oh, okay, everyone off. Everyone off. <laughs> Uh, and she addresses all, all, all of them, and uh, gather uh, any of your brothers and sisters that are around at the moment, and I guess just anybody around. Mm-hmm. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> 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 oh, well, uh, one day you'll have little ones of your, your own crawling around, and it, then it won't be pretty with 3,000 of them. That's how you all work, 3,000, right? Jesus! Why <laughs> <laughs> didn't you? Um, Mommy is going into a very dangerous situation, and those of you who don't wish to go along with her may stay here, um, but know it may be the last time that we see one another. All the spiders look around. Uh, they all sort of stare at each other. Um, they look up at you, and you see uh, Jason goes... And spider tear forms. Mom, that's bullshit. We're family. And if one of us is in danger, we're all in danger. If one of us is in trouble, we're all in trouble. If you're gonna go back in there, you see Jessa puts a big old arm on his back and he says, if you're in danger, then we're gonna help you. Oh, fuck, so stupid. <laughs> oh, no, we've been over this. Feelings aren't stupid, honey. Oh, it's, it's, very very good. it's very, very good to express yourself always. Crying is not a bad thing. Uh, I give s- him a little tiny handkerchief. You see that uh, Jessa looks up and says, Mom, I'm sorry, you're stuck with us. And Russell goes, Whatever happens, it'll happen to all of us together. <laughs> they all crawl back up on your carapace um, and go. You did a good job with those ones. Yeah, yeah you I really did. You know. Special little boys and girls, and you know what? In some ways, you've all done so much to help raise them. Aww. You've had such good role models around. As a daughter, if my if my dad told me to fuck off, I'd fuck right off. <laughs> yeah, these kids are good. Yes. Uh, you see that um, uh, uh, all the little spiders start uh, cheering on your back. And go, go team spider! Go team spider! Go team spider! Um, and uh, just cheering, and you see that uh, Jessup. Uh, creates a little silk uh, banner, of, a black banner with a little white spider logo on it with a little crown on top of it, and it says, Go Team Spider on it. Um, oh, and she's, she's so talented. Mommy's <laughs> special little girl. You're all mommy's special little girls and boys. Um, they all cheer, and they um, I hate to say this, but... I've got a good feeling about this. <laughs> uh, yeah, nothing bad from here on out. Let's 
You guys uh, all head out towards the blood keep together. Uh, uh, that was uh, so touching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that so much. Um, you guys all head off. You know the perfect path to get there. Uh, you guys head off towards the blood keep together. Uh, you see chaos goblins running around. Uh, we see sort of ward running around. Uh, you see that sort of a partially singed Bezo runs up and he goes, Oh, well, hey there, Silk Bar. This is a... Uh... Bezo, you made it through. I oh, sure did. I've eaten a bunch of people. It's been a it's been wild. Wow, you're having a great time, man. Oh, I guess so. Nothing Everything's can... just fucked. We're all fucked. I mean, look, uh, I don't know if we're totally fucked yet. We're, we're working on something here, but, I mean, you probably want to get out of here if you can, Bezo. I, I sure do. Hey, Silk Bar, you're, you're all right. I'm going to run off into the hills and just live like a wild fucking thing. I don't know. This whole army. That's the dream, isn't it? <laughs> uh, you and my brother, brother, take care. Oh! <laughs> um, you guys get to this sort of back entry, little like, guard tower, open a post, walk through. Uh, yeah, you just hear screams and howls around you all the way as you start walking. Um, you take a really circuitous route, actually, just to get, like, like you don't take the straightest route because you're also, your clairvoyance is allowing you to avoid Yeah, people. I think I see it like as if it's like a beautiful mind, but instead of a beautiful mind, it's one of Tolkien's maps. So it's like, it's like cool, cool <laughs> writing and lettering and, and like calligraphy, calligraphy made mountains and, and, oh. and, and tunnels. I, I would like to say, as we pass by the library, I just poke my head in and I wave with this dispel magic. <laughs> um, you see that in the library, there is an enormous towering, basically like a <laughs> titan <laughs> of books. And you see that it's like smashing its fist against the wall. You dispel and all the books fall down. And in the midst of the fist, you see Keldriel just <laughs> splat on the ground. And she goes, <laughs> No, no, but, but Keldriel, no, seriously, it, you can find one on a sliding scale. Just see somebody, see, see a specialist. <laughs> um, we're leaving and you can't come with us. <laughs> Good luck with the creeping horrors. <laughs> the horrors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you guys uh, head off uh, further on your way. Um, uh, uh, you guys uh, go a little bit further. See, there's like chaos in the market of spines. All the different booths have been looted and everything like that. But you see, in the chaos, uh, near the hall to the torturery, you see uh, Master Ipskix just looking deflated, sitting on a thing. And there's a bunch of little like note cards around him. And he's just like writing stuff on note cards. He looks like he's gotten hit in the head or injured and he's like stabbed somewhere, but there's a lot of dead bodies around him too. Just sort of scribbling. He looks up as you guys approach and he goes, Oh, hello. It's me, Master Ipskix. Can you ask, her, can I ask a question? Is this anything? I know that I know that my arms are bone saw, and that's why they always called me a saw bones. I just think you shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> no, I'm trying to work on just honestly just a ten minutes, just a tight it's ten minutes. Right. It's okay, you know. <laughs> Look here, uh, <laughs> M6. You got the talent. You just need the training. You, you got me chuckling a few times through the year. Really? Is it true? But you yeah, have dude. to figure out the science behind it. It can't just be a random scattershot approach where you just say whatever the hell you want. Take a class or something. I mean, but also, you, you seem to really love torturing people. Yeah. Like I do, but it, it's like I get the light from it, and this is part of me that's like... Well, maybe you can, you're can. you supposed to talk about what you know. Just, just sort of work that into your act, you know? Go, go yeah, yeah, yeah. with things that are funny from your funny I and will unusual say, from your you've life. Never been been funnier than when you are uh, just alighting on a victim. Look, I might regret this, but if you come down to uh, Kale Stoop, mm -hmm. there's a comedy school. It's the United Classes of Buffoons. <laughs> and you can, uh, <laughs> oh, and you UCB. Can, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they got shows there. We can, we got what you need. We can teach you a few things. I love it. I, you know, I sort of like. <laughs> I'd like to do that, but they sort of, I sort of like, uh, my comedy's kind of edgy, you know, it's oh, demented. I feel like putting well, labels yeah. on yourself is wrong, you should let the audience put the labels Yeah, also, yeah, you, you totally you missed a solid pun there, and I'm going to sit in that. What, what is it? What, what pun you said your comedy's edgy and you have a big blade connected Fuck, to it. Fuck! Yeah. It's, like, it's right it's just, there! It's just be present, be present, and then, like, I don't know. 
I just can't help you with this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys leave Ipscakes to his scrambling as the sort of rocks begin to start to fall all around here in the marketplace. Um, uh, awesome, you guys uh, uh, sort of continue on your way. Um, uh, oh, I just realized something. Um, uh, you see, uh, he's literally been hiding behind your tresses the entire time. So your hair parts an old pickering leans out. <laughs> well, is it safe to come out again? <laughs> oh, pickering, no! You're, ah, you're there he that. is. Oh, he's a good yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we have survived, we survived. Feel bad about Henry and Anne, but you know, there's a reason you're the oldest person on my crew. I can't die. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you're old and wily like me, and I'm down a hand, but I'm still breathing. All right, uh, we're, we're gonna, we got, this is just the first part of a big mission, because we'll have to take Kale Stoop. I could probably heal your hand. I just need um, about four hours of meditation, and we haven't come across any time. Ah. <laughs> well, isn't that just the, the cut of it? You know, there's so much to do in this world. I always thought I'd want to see the far off mountains of the north and everything like that. But you know, you get what you get, and you don't get upset. Here's something I have for you, Davian. Uh, 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 Pickering. Use use the stone, the hearing stone. Touch base back at Kale Stoop. Oh, I can do that. That's right. Uh, he takes his little hearing stone out, goes, um, uh, t touching base with the Forgotten Fleet and everyone back, and then he starts to sort of talk to people in Kale Stoop uh, as you guys continue on your way. Um, uh, as you all... That man shot a flintlock into a room full of gunpowder no less than three times. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, Bad Henry thought he was a bad pirate, but that guy, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, uh, cool. Um, uh, uh, you, uh, you guys arrive um, uh, at a chamber that's often you haven't been to before. This is the Cathedral of Gogloth within the sort of part. So like, the Lord of Shadows has at the top and directly down the spine of the Blood Keep. So like at the base of that, this like huge cathedral you see up everywhere, like huge torrents of blood, yawning mouth, almost horrifying imagery. Uh, it's the central dark cathedral. And as we're looking at this, when we kind of approach this, this grotesque uh, visage, like just staring at it, stop a minute, and kind of leaning in the direction of Maggie go, I, it's, it's taken me a bit of thought, but I, I really begun to realize how un unhealthy my relationship with Zalmanajah was. It's like borderline obsession. It is crazy. I mean, I was dating the guy, and even I was like, oh, why are you not that great? I, yeah. I think I may have loved him, hmm. and I think I, I, I put a lot of unearned loathing on you for that, and I am so sorry. You know, I'm so glad we're talking about this. Me I too. think I was kind of doing the same. You know, he was my one purpose, and you know, and then same. he's gone, I was like, what am I doing? I'm gonna say, oh, mom. Uh, <sighs> it's true, what, what about your own career options? What now? about? You've got a whole bunch to think about. Riddle me that, what about that? Uh, <laughs> as you guys say that, you actually see that um, a uh, flickering image appears, and in the giant, like, truly to figurine scale almost like this big. So like a hundred foot across statue of yawning gog moth that's up here. Deep in its eyes, two flames light. And though the statue does not move, you hear an echoing voice as though traveling from planes beyond this one. Echo from the mouth. And you hear, Maggie. My daughter. Must be an unhealthy relationship. <laughs> God. Hi, Dad. I want to know I'm sorry for losing my shit earlier. That old hush has been wrapped in chains of fire and is being pulled apart across the last springs of shadow. You know what? Good. Great. I don't care what he's up to anymore. You deserve to know the truth. And you guys see that a little door of flame opens in the cathedral at like a little nave or chapel area. Uh, to And you see that uh, just images of fire of Leland and Maggie appear there. Um, and you see the statue of Lucas Town says, <gasps> Is that my grandson? Yes, it is. Oh, what's his name? Well, it's Leland Jr. Oh. What? What, Dad? 
What? I don't know. I just thought, um... Name after a guy who's, like, never here. Okay, so like, it's, oh, it's my fault. Like, never around. I was banished by all of the gods of light. I don't know. It's my fault that I wasn't around? I know. You're putting yourself in those situations all the time. I would lo I would absolutely love to be wandering the world of Elda again. Hmm. You think I wouldn't love that? You think I like having to I talk to a fucking statue? Oh, oh, I don't know what you like, Dad, because you never open up to me. Well, you know, maybe I should have opened up to you if you were a little bit more uh, tender, you know, a little Ooh, bit more. tender. We're talking tender now? <laughs> I shut down the, the, the <laughs> communication real quick, and I was like, I couldn't do it for you before, but I can do it for you now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, you see, that uh, vanishes. Um, but you see that there's still this flaming door uh, that has just images of you guys. Uh, uh, in it. And you see there's almost like a vision through it. Uh, but it's, of course, your choice whether or not to walk through. And why? What is happening? I have to know. Uh, I'm not going to lie, the curiosity is very strong it's right now. It's very strong. I mean, I, as, it, as the king's <laughs> new high advisor, I have to tell you, I don't know. <laughs> How far apart are the doors? Well, they're saying it's being honest. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's it's really beautiful. It's a single, it's a single door be. with both of your images in it. Okay. Like side by side? Um, uh, yeah, side by side. So side, by side. Should we, uh, shall I hold the baby? Yes. <laughs> Uh, you see a bunch of little spiders go, oh, let's look at it. Oh, look, he's so little. <laughs> oh, his skin's soft instead of hard. Please don't bite him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see that he actually bites one of your children, and, and they're like, wow. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, this kid rules. You see that he like gnaws and chomps on your finger. <laughs> uh, it's like you're hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like the same feeling as when the lava bog. It's like, oh, this is great. Uh, you guys walk in and you begin to see uh, uh, images of the entire life of Zawul Naj. Um, you see uh, images of like him working with Lilith back in the day, and then Lilith, you know, being sidelined. And you see lots of times of him. Oh, at you also you also see, definitely see them hooking up. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> like, yeah. he never told me that. <laughs> like, like, but like, he like never stayed the night, and so it was just like a yeah. You know, yeah, raw physical. Was, yeah. There was not oh, yeah. a lot. Yeah, exactly. It's just like you work with someone for eight hundred years. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's gonna happen. Um, uh, you see, yeah, you see, Holnaj <laughs> and Lilith. It's like you, weird stuff. Oh, weird oh. stuff. Okay, we'll talk later. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys move uh, through from there. Um, as you look around, you see images of uh, him. You see Zawulnaj speaking to like other demons and other like uh, ancient spirits of evil, and uh, uh, you see him also talking to the other Vinguri. Um, you see the way he talks about you, Maggie, when you're not around. Uh, Fuck. Uh, and you basically just see him going, like, uh, sort of speaking to these, these elder spirits of evil, being like, yeah, yeah, I really, she's, you know, she's completely hot. She's stacked. She's great. Stacked. Uh, you see, he says, and, uh, you know, we get along fine. Should we get along fine? And, you know, it's it's a good, the marriage marriage would be a good idea. I mean, her dad's god moth, it just sort of makes sense. It's, like, it's hard, it's really hard though, because, um, you know, uh, it's like, it'd be nice to keep the field open a little bit. Um, and you see that uh, also, uh, he says, it's like, He's like, uh, I'll be honest, uh, if, I, if I had my druthers, uh, there's a lot of the Vinguri that look really good. I mean, Leland, have you seen that guy? I mean, I would love to send him on missions and watch that, watch that dude walk away from me. <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever seen uh, uh, a wraith turn red. <laughs> um, uh, you see that, uh, and you, you see as you turn red, you watch images of the other Vinguri, you see he has like Miles and Oswald and Declan in front of him, people like that, and you see he's going like, look at you, you're fucking tattered. There's not even, you know how many tatters Leland has in his robe? Sorry, he actually says, you guys, Krastun's got a million tatters. He's got tatters all over the place. He keeps his shit tight, he keeps it tight, like he, he's working. You look like a fucking mess. Torbale, come on, let's keep it. Let's keep it up here. And you just see all the other Vinguri, uh, uh, as he like 
compliments you and praises you in all these weird, gross, twisted ways uh, and uh, uses you to like put down the other Vinguri. And you guys are just in this like fiery vortex of all of these images of uh, Zalmash. What a fucking pig! <gasps> uh, I agree. Oh, do you? I do, actually. <gasps> I can't believe it. You think you're with someone for a hundred years, and there's so behind the scenes they're talking about you like they're in a fucking locker room? <laughs> <laughs> Declan, I am so sorry. And Declan disappears into the maw of God Moth as side as you guys the door vanishes, you're both standing there back in the cathedral again. Uh, having gotten a sight, uh, I imagine is first of all, all of Maggie's worst fears confirmed. Mm -hmm. And then for Leland, I think this bizarre moment of of like winning the like winning the lottery after you've already realized that money can't make you happy. Or is you something? Yeah, it, very much so. Yeah, it's this moment of like, oh, this like, I was held in the steam that I spent centuries searching for by a guy who didn't deserve how hard I served him and how hard I worked for him. Uh, and you guys are standing there side by side in the Cathedral of Godmoth uh, with your friends nearby. Is the cool shit in there? <laughs> what are they, they showing you? Um, was it like, was did like, you, were you, do you regret not bringing the baby? Was it something the baby should have seen? No. No. <laughs> All right. You, you deserve so much better. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> what, a, what a crazy fucking spell we were both under. Telling like me. God. We should go on a shopping trip. <laughs> yes! I am all about I am this. so into it. And I have some color schemes I think that will look wondrous on you. No, no. No, yes. seriously, I yes, just... Yes, Pogmoth. If you... What? I'm sorry? <laughs> what is your name? Wait, what you see it? Sogmar! Sogmar! Oh, Sogmar. Oh, Sogmar. Oh, I always call my dad's name. Yeah, that's weird. Oh, yeah. Believe Sogmar. me, this is, one, yeah. this is one of the lesser times it's bad to say your father's name. Yeah. Trust so, yes. Mm. yes. We gotta get you in some new clothes, for oh, sure. I feel like, you, no, it's it's just, what, you're an Ottoman. What's wrong with rags? You're an Ottoman, I feel like the fetid rags in, in sort of uh, warmer colors would do a lot for you. It's, right. it's not about getting rid of the, the rags, it's about finding the right things to accessorize. Can I say and, something? Yes. yes. I was really jealous of Jonathan Feather's skin hat. <laughs> Can I, you think I could pull that off? Oh, 100%. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sockbar, yes. Sockbar, yes. Sockbar, yes. Sockbar, yes. Sockbar, yes. <laughs> um, and you see uh, Lilith holding little Leland Jr. over there. <sighs> He's so well behaved. They only spit spit up fire onto Sockbar once. <laughs> oh, yes. good. I'm um, glad you don't look still on a thing fire. like oh, your sure, father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so did you, did you get a little bit of closure then? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Give me an insight <laughs> check if you'd be so kind. Uh, and you'll roll with advantage on this, so it'll be just a flat skill check. Okay. Uh, uh, 18 plus... Oh, uh, 28. Uh, what does Lilith being very insightful see in um, Maggie's eyes as... Uh, what did you roll? 28. Oh, I think you see everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an open book. <laughs> Oftentimes, abusers can be very charismatic, can't they? It's crazy. <laughs> what I always enjoyed about the two of your relationships was I felt, I'd hoped that you made him better. I'd hoped that you know, he'd found somebody, that he'd, you know, change. We always hope that they can change. Oh, yeah. We put all that work into hoping that they change. But in reality, we need to change. <laughs> we need to move on. <laughs> yes. And now you have your child. You have a world of career options open to you. As do you, Leland. Oh, I've already chosen my new occupation. Oh, <laughs> fascinating. Protector of this one. Just like an 80, cool 80%. Just like one. Look, I, I, I have a particular set of skills. 
There's only so many ways I can apply them. <laughs> as as, uh, as uh, we see this enormous statue of Gogmoth, I, I kind of approach it um, with my hand outstretched, and I'm not really talking to anyone, but I say, you know, I used to pray to you and worship your very being, asking you for direction and guidance. And now you look so small, as I know that I now worship the line between good and evil. You guys see some of those bands of magic from uh, back in the crater after the fall circle around Effing. Uh, she says that. Um, do we know, uh, are we in a position to do like something with the crown here? Do we know like well? Or... This is the cathedral of Godmoth. This is there's a secret door here that leads straight down to the chamber, deep, deep, deep down. Um, if you wanted something with the crown here, you possibly could. Yeah. I know we were sort of talking about you know who's going to be the face of evil and who's going to remake stuff, and I've been sort of mulling it over in my head and I'm thinking about how, again, and I, and I can't stress this enough, we've really fucked the fucked things up a lot. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes, you know, it, it, it's, it's humbling to say, like, maybe, uh, maybe the, the answer lies in the future. Maybe it lies in, uh, uh, in some, some sort of... Uh, do, do we not always say things like, I'll see you, I'll fight you another day, and uh, you haven't seen the last of me. Oh, maybe you the just answer's... said that. Yeah. 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 It feels good to shake your fist. Yeah. It's more of a reflex. For maybe yeah. the power of evil is not in any one of our particular philosophies, but in, in the idea of a, a continuing uh, lineage of evil and a continuing line. And yes. Maybe the crown along should go with Leyland Jr. As much as uh, Zalnaj did make so many mistakes, I can count two. Uh, good things that he's done. One, your child, and two, bringing us together. Oh. Wow. <laughs> that is two. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, wonderful. Um, uh, uh, so I, I uh, um, uh, not, not my kid, I, and I don't even know if this is my decision, but I'm at least, uh, I'm gonna give this to Maggie, and uh, you know what I think we should do with it. I agree with Sakbar. I was thinking it the whole time. Leland Jr. for new king? Well, I will say this. Um, as a an, an former angelic being as the, who has seen the beginning of time itself, um, that in the end, sometimes it may be dangerous to imbue just one being with all this power, but with a council of elders and uh, the input of some wise individuals, oh, sure. I'm sure that a figurehead, a symbol of hope for the future of evil, would do well to wear a crown. I mean, a baby's not gonna be able I to mean, do much. I mean, complete so. agreement. I think that the king is a figurehead, and then we have more of like a prime minister situation oh, yeah. as an actual executor right. of the law. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, you guys uh, start uh, uh, engaging in a fun conversation about statecraft. <laughs> 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 yes, you guys. Uh, it's a when you're, you're literally, it's like it's like ancient statues are crumbling, and it's like rocks coming down. You're like going down this like, thing, it's like pure evil tunnels, and it's like. So, bicameral legislature versus this. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I see terrible things happening. I see better things happening with the crown on that boy's head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you guys make your way all the way down until you finally arrive. Uh, you finally arrive deep, deep down um, and open your way into this ancient tomb. The walls are lined with the bodies the ancient dead, high priests and priestesses of Gog Moth entombed here in a fountain of blood. The root of the blood keep itself rests in the center of the chamber. You feel a stillness here. <laughs> Disrupted by the noise of the tower beginning to come down up above you. Blood shimmers in the fountain. You feel the waves of escape above you collapsing. The future, the forces of evil in the lands of Gorgar will be decided here in this room. The fountain of blood rests before you. You hold the crown, you hold Leland Jr. You are here, the six of you united. 
plus Jeremy and Old Pickering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank God Old Pickering's here. That fucking... motherfucker. Yeah. I mean, he like... was more hard than he yeah. was good. Can, 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 can tie him up? Tie him up, yeah. <laughs> Put him in a web somewhere. So. It's, um, it's always such a funny thing in D&D when you're like, us companions three and my dog. Um, yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> um... Uh, but you arrive here at the Fountain of Blood. Um, uh, yeah, you feel that the, the, the begin to be tremors even here this deep underground, but you're so deep in the earth that the tremors from up above are not fully reaching you yet. Um, uh, what do you, as you approach the fountain, um, you see that there are these incredible um, statues around you that are statues to these... Uh, you don't actually know them. Uh, anyone here can make an arcana check to see if, what you know about these statues here. 20, dirty 20. Dirty 20, cool. Yeah. 10. 10, cool. 7, 16. Um, uh, Leland, you look over at them and see these statues as uh, nameless gods of old. From the very beginning when the early songs that founded the world uh, were first corrupted. And these things are older than names. And you realize that Zawulnaj, Gogmoth, these things have always been wielding a power and in the manner of piggishness and hubris that defines Zawulnaj and Gogmoth both uh, claimed to be the source of a thing that they were only ever speaking for. And these things represent, by having no name and being this ancient, a truth about that force, that it can never belong to just a single being. Uh, and as you look at the six of you and having had this conversation about sharing something that was always sought after singularly, um, the fact that this truth has come to light fills your cold, dead heart with a sense of purpose and determination to know the truth of this room. Um, but you recognize them as being important spirits that are overseeing this place. Um, and uh, the fountain of blood rests in front of you and you feel that um, all that would need to be done would be to approach this fountain and call forth the powers within. As I'm kind of making these connections, I'm, I'm not even acknowledging the fact that I'm out loud speaking it to everybody as I'm kind of just scanning the scenery. Mm-hmm. So here we are, surrounded by what is essentially the cradle of all darkness. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's not too bad. Uh, yeah, a bit gauche in places, but you know, it's old. Yeah. Appreciate the history. They built it like that back when, you know, before time. I yeah. decided to say yes to my feelings from now on and Lilith, I'd like a hug. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, Lilith, uh, it, it like scuttles over and just picks her up in a huge embrace. <laughs> yeah, my, my legs kick out from behind me. Oh. <laughs> it just feels like an important moment that I'd like to share. Oh, Aww. I think, thank you. Yes. I'm so proud of you. You know, guys, why don't we all just get one big hug around the fountain? Yeah. 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 Let's go, let's go. Let's let's go. go. Let's let's get get out. Out. Yeah. Yeah. This was supposed to be the evil game. <laughs> <laughs> this was the evil one. <laughs> D&D is too powerful a force for good in the world. <laughs> I'm like, wow, working together and being united in social situations really makes me see that we are all in it together. <laughs> uh, incredible. Um, cool, uh, uh, you guys all hug, and you hear a vo- As you all hug, fuck it, you don't approach, you see the fountain of blood erupts in a shower of fucking fiery hot blood, and this evil boatman appears and goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> Listen here. You are the last generals of darkness. You are hugging each other in the tomb of final evil. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> well, we just realized that we can be more evil together than our individual evil parts alone. Yeah, it's like a, it's a greater than the sum of its parts kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, just, just, you're just, defining good. You're defining good. No, no, no. no, no, no. 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 We're no. defining I mean, evil. Let me draw a little. Imagine there's nine squares in a grid, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, not, we're not defining evil. That's why evil has failed for so long. We are evolving 
Evil. We're disrupting. Oh, okay, evil. this blend. Right, we're taking this <laughs> cool thing where we're disrupting. We're taking out the middleman and we're bringing evil straight to you. Damn oh. right, girl. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm not, enough of this. <laughs> Mind you, I understand that you have here the crown and you wish to um, create some new type of evil here. Yes. 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 yes, 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 yes. yes. All right, well, I'm not into it. So <laughs> if you're going to do this, what I'm going to need is a blessing from the spirits here within. All the spirits of the room must give a blessing to this um, uh, child, and then I suppose I'm going to be honored bound to um, have to grant it power over the forces of darkness. And how do we obtain these blessings? Um, it's up to you. You will have to speak to the spirits themselves and see what can be offered. Um, I will say, you guys hear a noise coming from behind you. Um, and the tramp of many feet following down the passageway. And you hear a voice say, I have been only very clear about what it is that I want. Dear God. Dear God. Again, this guy is so, so uh, passionate and just really hard to be around, yes. you know? Oh, boat keeper, if you were seeking forces of evil, you might just have found it. You see, the boat keeper says, well, if whoever that is gets to it first, then I'm gonna give it to them, so. Best of luck. <laughs> Olog and all his orcs come charging through the passageway. In his arrayed forces, Lucius says, the Shriders, they are trying not to die. <laughs> and he uh, uh, comes with all his orcs. You see, boom, the foundations of the blood keep shake. The door collapses behind them. And I need all of you to roll initiative. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> With that, we are going to end this penultimate episode of Escape from the Blood. Keep tuned in next week for the thrilling finale. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> we find ourselves here in the tomb of the core of the Blood Keep, where the boatman pure evil waits in the fountain of blood. Make sure that baby gets blessed. Right here! In the name of friendship! We're evil! We're <laughs> <laughs> evil! Mal special! No! That ability has never been more useful. Nope! Uh, nope! Amazing. You want us to play evil characters, <laughs> or we're actually playing evil players. <laughs> no. <laughs> Guys, that's it for this chapter of Dimension 20. But wait, hearken. The cry of more full episodes of Dimension 20. They call out to you from dropout.tv. Will you not run to their aid with your free trial today?